So our theme for the month is liberation. And I chose this for several reasons. Some of them you can probably fill in on your own. Uh, but I was listening to a podcast by with my friends, Reverend Kelly Isla and Reverend Ogenholder. And Kelly was talking about how freedom is a moment and liberation is an action, is active. And that really clicked for me and that idea that we are in a constant untangling process of walking um, through and towards more liberation, individuals, as a community, as um, systems of government, as how we see each other. We are in a continual process of a liberation. And that's much more interesting to me than the idea that, um, oh, freedom, poof, it's happened. <laughs> I think most of us realize that it's not quite that uh, simple or straightforward. You may have seen, I don't know, a couple years ago, I showed you a picture of a cat in a, in a, in a, in a carrier but the lid was off, but it was sitting in there looking at the gate, even though all it had to do was turn a little bit and jump over the edge. And so I think that we, that's a really great uh, reminder about the idea that we can be technically free, but internally not, or we can still have systems in place that are oppressive. So, so I've been reading some liberation theology. Just wait, I'm gonna be reading more. Uh, liberation theology is something that's come, that emerged from uh, oppressed people uh, in Latin America and, uh, Black liberation theology is what I was been reading this week. Uh, 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 women and people, uh, any uh, LGBTQ folks, all of these have have people who say, "Wait a minute, how do we make the theology a a theology that makes sense and works for my people, my people who have been oppressed?" So, Dr. James Cohn, who really was you could argue the first black liberation theology person. Uh, he wrote, oppression in any form was a denial of people's humanity and the oppressed must be whatever, must use whatever power they have to defend their humanity. Defending one's humanity against an oppressive political system was not only a human, but a Christian's responsibility. Indeed, Jesus came to liberate the oppressed. And so there's a lot in there, but the idea is what we have also looked at while we've been studying um, with Dr. Borgs and Crossan, their books about what Jesus, what it meant at the time of Jesus, the things that he was teaching. And what Jesus taught at the time was to stand for the little people, stand for the people who were not having their needs met, stand for the people who were being um, held back and held down by the system. The religion of, or the teachings of Jesus was not for the people in charge. I mean, he was telling him to knock it off. That was that was his message to the people in charge. <laughs> uh, and so, so if we step into that, that to me is where the liberation comes from. It's not it's, so. It is both a social movement realizing that our humanity is tied to our neighbors, and it's also about freedom within 
ourselves, liberation within ourselves. Charles Fillmore defined liberation as we are not to be liberated through suppression of sense or by violent overcoming, but through a steady step-by-step -step demonstration over every error. Miriam Webster defines liberty as the quality or state of being free. The power to do as one pleases. Freedom from physical restraint, obviously. Freedom from arbitrary control, the power of choice. And so I think that we can look at this idea of a steady step by step demonstration over every error. You know, Charles Fillmore used error as a way to think, talk about any of our misbeliefs any assumptions that we may have made about ourselves or about the world. I'm not actually sure how much he thought about the world. Myrtle did though, so we'll go with that. <laughs> and so one of the things that I really enjoy about the Forest Fair this weekend and about working at the Renaissance Festival a couple weeks ago is that people show up expressing however they want. They show up wearing pointy ears and flowers and glitter and, you know, whatever outfit might feel right for them. And, and I think it's a wonderful, beautiful thing because self-expression or the ability even to try different things to see what fits Is, is part of liberation. And I think about how most of us at some point or probably many points in our life were told that we needed to act a certain way, dress a certain way, choose certain careers and or not choose certain careers, that good people behaved in a certain way. And what if all of that's not necessarily true. What if we looked at those ideas? What if we believe that we're not a good singer or we can't art, whatever that mean, might mean for us, or that uh, what, whatever, I mean, there's so many things that we've taken on as true. And those are the jails that we put ourselves in. Those are the shackles that hold us down. We believe that uh, I'm just one person. What difference can I make? And so liberation, as I said, is a continually untangling process of realizing where we might have accepted a limitation that someone told us or that we picked up or we thought was true. I'm only one person, I can't do that. Nice people don't uh, raise their voice or argue. Keep it, just be nice. Unfortunately, people who are hurting, people who are suffering, don't have the freedom to be nice. If you're drowning, you do whatever you can to stop drowning. And so those of us who are not drowning should not be saying, hush, 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 we're trying to listen. We should be saying, how do we get the people to stop drowning? And so our liberation is tied to our neighbor's liberation. Our freedom is tied to our neighbor's freedom, our humanity. I just imagine with, 
you know, I have a part of me hurts for the people that I think about in history and now who do things that harm people in big systemic ways. I think how painful it must be to be so disconnected from their neighbor, to be so disconnected from their humanity and love and joy that they behave in the ways that they choose to behave. That doesn't mean we shouldn't draw a line there. We definitely should. But, but if we can see them as people in that way, then we don't dehumanize ourselves by dehumanizing them. And that, once again, moves us towards more liberation because when we put someone outside the circle of humans who are worthy of love, then we become part of that too. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And so, so what does liberation look like? Well, we continue to move towards that. And we continue instead of just, we don't look just ahead, but we look who, who can we assist? Who is struggling that I can listen to and believe their struggle and say, oh, I see that there's something in the way here. How can I help dismantle whatever it is that is in the way? We all have the ability to do that. So this month, we're going to look at what limits have we accepted as true in our own life, in our world? What can, quote unquote social norms have we decided, oh yeah, that's just the way it is, but what if they're not? Can we show up? to life with all of our glitter and pointy ears or whatever it is that feels true and real and fun and authentic to us instead of believing that we have to be a certain way to be acceptable. So those are the questions that we get to ask when we're talking about liberation. It's not about freedom, one and done, the gates are open. It's about every day choosing to walk through the gates. It's about every day choosing maybe to leave behind the city that had those gates to begin with and then realizing, oh, look, there's another set of gates. <laughs> because the process of liberation is an always choosing not a once choosing. The process of liberation is about speaking our truth. It's about allowing our neighbor who's suffering to speak first. It's about believing and trusting and supporting. It's about coming into our deepest center, our spiritual truth. That's where we are the most free. And then we believe it. <laughs> what if we believed it? Our absolute word today said, I am divine. I'm always free. I'm always free. And yet, we still have to walk through the gate. We still have to walk through the gate. So we'll be asking these questions, things to think about this week, this month about these things, what are the things we've accepted as true? What are the things we don't want to accept anymore as true? What are the things that we could do to move through these things on a spiritual level, on a, in our world level, they all connect. 
So that's the thing to think about for now as you go forth through this week where some choose to celebrate the idea of freedom, realizing that uh, that step of freedom is one step, but it's not true for everyone. And so there's still work to do. So that is our quest, our journey of liberation. How exciting. Because <laughs> once we know, then we can do something, right? So that's why it's exciting.